Oh my goodness, goddesses. Let me just tell you that I am really, really excited to share this episode with you today. But let me tell you that the end result did not come as an easy feat for me. Yes, it is a story. Yes, it is an interpretation. But in my experience, this is the longest amount of time it took me to actually get this out to you. And thank goodness for editing because what you're about to hear is the finished product and it is not certainly not the raw product because I stumbled through that entire episode. But I felt so clear that I needed to deliver this message. I also felt very committed to getting it out no matter what state it was in, no matter how imperfect it is. One of my mentors says 70% is perfection. When you start to get into perfection mode, that's when things don't get done, right? That's when procrastination starts. So anyway, I hope that you enjoy this episode. This episode came as a result of A, as I explained in the episode, so I don't want to say it twice, but people are really craving to know this information about rest, the basics, the the foundation. We all need to rest, and it's not necessarily, as you will quickly discover, about taking a traditional nap. It's what does rest actually look like and what can come as a result of truly resting, of really listening to your body, listening to your soul, listening to your spirit, listening to your higher self, and giving yourself the rest that you truly need because we're all tired. I was just reading this post on Instagram about why we're all so tired. We are all tired and we need to truly rest. That is the thing that we need to do. That is the gift that we need to give ourselves. It's not a matter of getting more things and getting the expensive bags and the shoes and the the handbags. Though those things are nice. I love my expensive cars and my expensive things. But really it's it's line, aligning with ourselves and giving ourselves true rest. And when I say rest, that is true. What I'm actually saying is rest that is true for you. And I'm going to talk about that in the episode. Like what does rest really look like for you? Because for one person, rest could look one way and the person could come out of the rest feeling really refreshed and recharged. Whereas for somebody else, it could be totally different. So I'm going to dive into that too. I'm really, really excited to share this with you if, you if you haven't already noticed. And please, please, please leave your comments, your takeaways, all the things that you learned from this episode and how you can change your life. Please message me on Instagram at I am Angela Noel with your takeaways. Share it with your friends and your family. I really feel passionate about this project. And as you probably have noticed, this is a sequel episode. This is a sequel to episode 85, which is one of the most downloaded episodes that I've ever done. And I realized we're on to something and I need to talk about this more. So fire goddesses, stay tuned. Hello, fire goddesses. Welcome to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am a prosperity coach for the newly awakened or awake curious driven overachiever and overdoer. After running a successful acupuncture practice in Boston for 12 years, I decided to hang my hat by closing the practice and pursue what it is that I'm really meant to do in this world, and that is to serve humanity online on a global scale. Using my background in Chinese medicine, along with the brain science of habits, spirituality, and divine masculine and feminine energy balance. I am here to help you not just understand, but know how powerful you are and that you are the person who is responsible for having the finances, inner peace, radiant health, and energy, aka the fire, in your life that you've always desired. My intention with this podcast is to serve humanity, no matter what gender you identify as, to help bring out the divine feminine goddess in each and every one of you. As you probably are already aware, the world is changing and is begging 
for the goddess to come out in each and every one of you. So fire goddesses, stay tuned. Hello fire goddesses and welcome to episode 92 of the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel and this episode is about what becomes possible when you fully surrender to rest part two. So if you've been listening for a while, you probably already know about episode 85. You probably heard it already, but if you didn't, I invite you to actually go back and listen to that episode first. I'll link it in the show notes. And that episode, which is a pretty recent episode, has been one of the most downloaded episodes in all of my podcast episodes. And it really has been interesting to notice and witness that whenever I do an episode on resting or sleeping, they always do really, really well. You probably remember, I think it was episode 35. Goodness, I don't remember now. I did an episode with Saskia Bergman's Smith last year where we talked about sleep hacks. And that one just, just also performed really well. And, you know, I've realized, even though I love to talk about all the things, woo, and spirituality, and empowerment, like that is my jam. I love talking about that stuff. And I know the fact that you're listening, chances are you also love that stuff too. But what I've realized is that people still crave the basics. They crave to know how they can fully immerse and take care of themselves, take care of their health, especially right now. I have decided that I'm going to do a sequel to episode 85. In this episode, what becomes possible when you surrender to rest part two. And I want to just quickly share with you my personal experience because it was a very, very monumental experience of me learning so many important lessons when I surrendered to rest, when I took my sabbatical from my business in the latter part of 2021 and the earlier part of 2022. And I'm going to impart what I learned by doing that with the intention that it will help you understand more why, why it is so important to rest And healthy people and successful people, they know the importance of resting. They know that it's while it's important to do all the things that are necessary in your day-to-day life, it's also important to balance out that doing by being. And one way that you can be is by resting. And also one thing that I want to mention about rest is people, (laughs) you know, I talk to a lot of people all the time. And they tell me, yeah, you know, I rest. I go up into my room and I go on my phone and I play games. Now, I'm not, it's not not my intention to say what is right and what is wrong with the things that you're doing when you're resting. But if you're somebody that considers being on Instagram and laying in your bed and resting, if you consider that resting, and you come out of that experience feeling truly rested, then you're rested. But if you're coming out of the experience of laying in your bed on your phone for hours and hours and you're noticing, oh my God, I feel like edgy, I feel wired, I feel grumpy, I feel tired, all that is information from your body. And you know, your body is always going to tell you what it needs. Now, In our society, we were told otherwise. We're told that, you know, our body, if there's something wrong with our body, then that means that there's something wrong with us and that we need external, we need external means to heal our body. But the thing is, you have all the knowledge within yourself to take care of yourself. You have all the knowledge and all the wisdom within your own body, mind, and spirit to be healthy, to be happy, to be free, to be all the things that most of us want in life. So when it comes to resting, I'm going to share with you really, really quickly what I learned as a result of fully surrendering to rest when I took my sabbatical in the latter part of 2021 and into 2022. 
And to be fully and completely honest with you and transparent, I am really just coming back into my business only within the last couple of months. As you know, I went through a divorce last year and this year I moved my life completely changed 180 and what I needed more than anything else while I navigated through that change was to be in the act of not feeling like I needed to do all the time. Around September of 2021, I started to feel signs and symptoms of burnout, of adrenal fatigue. I had put on weight, even though I was working out, I, I worked out at Orange Theory, I had I had an unlimited membership and I, I went there three, sometimes four times a week. And I thought I was doing all the things and checking the boxes. And as somebody that is a healthcare practitioner, I always felt that when it came to my physical health, I had it down, like I was good. And what I realized is that there were a few things that I was doing completely backwards when it came to really nurturing and taking care of my health. And I want to share with you the lessons that I learned as a result of fully surrendering, fully surrendering to rest. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready for this episode? So I basically took a sabbatical from my business from November to May of 2022 six months sabbatical. And I did that because what I realized now is that I was mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted. I needed to take a break. There were periods of time where all I really wanted to do was lay on my couch and watch movies for hours upon hours upon hours. And I was so conditioned to believe that laying on the couch for hours and hours and hours and watching TV was not a good use of time. And it took getting COVID in January of 2022, early this year, to finally be able to give myself permission to do that. Because that was COVID for me. I basically laid on the couch. I had no energy. And I watch TV, I watch movies, I caught up on shows and movies, and, and I found that to be absolutely refreshing to do that. I tuned in with my body, and that was exactly what she needed at that time. And here's the thing. I wonder sometimes, you know, in those little pockets of time where I just wanted to just lay on the couch for a couple of hours and watch TV, if I just allowed myself that opportunity to rest, would I have been so burned out as I was when I really, when all of this really started in September of 2021? I'll never know the answer to that. It doesn't really matter. I learned my lessons. I've moved on. And now I'm here sharing and imparting my wisdom to you in hopes that if you're ever in a situation where you're in burnout, that you know more the next time to lean into what your body, mind, and spirit is asking for. So what I want to share with you is not necessarily the hows of my resting, because I talked about a lot of that in previous episodes. But what I wanted to share with you is what resulted as a result of me completely surrendering to rest of me choosing to take a sabbatical and of me choosing to really not be in the act of doing and producing 24 seven, because that's, that's where I was. And I want to share with you what resulted at the time before I realized that I was going into this sabbatical before I fully realized how burned out I was. You know, when I was really just noticing that my workouts were not feeling good in my body, I, I was, I realized now I was just inflamed that what I should have been doing in September instead of pushing through my workouts, which were just making me feel miserable. And that's actually one sign of when you really need to surrender to rest is when you're doing these workouts and 
they just don't feel good. And there's a difference between them feeling challenging, right? The kind of thing that doesn't feel good, but it's challenging and it's pushing and it's stretching you. And then there's the not feeling good that just feels like, oh my gosh, my body is yearning for rest. My body's asking to not do these things right now. And every time I do this workout, which for me which was Orange Theory, I just felt worse or I was getting like injured. And to this day, I'm recording this in June of 2022. I still have these little tiny injuries. They were never major injuries, but they were injuries that kept me from running how I wanted to run or even stretching the way that I wanted to stretch and, and, and doing certain movements that my body was used to doing. Because I was not surrendering to rest and I was choosing to push through because that's what we learn, right? In order to achieve your goals, you need to push sometimes. What I invite you to lean into is understanding the difference. Understanding what it means in your body when you're, when you're really pushing and stretching for the sake of having more fitness and achieving your goals and getting stronger versus you're pushing because you feel like you have to do this when really it just doesn't feel good anymore. And in my case, even though I am a healthcare practitioner and I thought I knew how to take care of myself and, and yes, I was still exercising proper form. I wasn't like pushing myself over the edge at the, at the, at the gym. But what I really needed at that time was for me to just totally deactivate my membership and just start leaning into rest back then. But I didn't do that. And by the time November rolled around, I was completely and totally exhausted. Exhausted. Exhausted to the point where I went to the doctor and um, I didn't see my regular doctor. I saw my nurse practitioner and... I was just having a conversation with her about the workouts and I was like, I just need to stop doing these things. Like there was this knowing that I needed to stop months ago and I chose not to listen. And thank goodness I didn't injure myself. Like you hear of those people, right? They, they go to the CrossFit and they're pushing and pushing and pushing and they end up injured, right? It's not because of the CrossFit workout. It's not because of the yoga and it's not because of, of the workout itself. It's because of your lack of alignment to your body, to your inner self, which is asking for everything that it needs and you ignoring it. That's what's happening. That's why we get injured, right? So I was doing exactly that. I was not listening to my body. And when I went to the doctor, I was like, you know, I just have this sneaking suspicion. And I think just by me saying it out loud to my doctor, to my nurse practitioner, that these workouts were no longer good, by having that conversation, it opened something up within me that fully realized, hey, listen, I need to stop. I need to stop it already. So I got a doctor's note. I deactivated my membership for, I think it was three months, two or three months. And I only walked and hiked during that time. And in December of that year, I went to Sedona. I took myself to Sedona for three weeks for my 50th birthday. And basically... I had visitors and I did see people, but I was committed to my resting. And that's really when the idea of the sabbatical was born, was while I was in Sedona. I was still doing things here and there for the business. I was checking in, I was meeting with people. But for the most part, that is really when I started really taking it down a few notches. And during that time is when the most miraculous of miracles happened. And that's really what I want to highlight today is what happened when I completely surrendered to rest. What becomes possible for you when you completely surrender to rest? When I got back from Sedona, it was such a great time, by the way. I I had an amazing, I mean, it was just, if you follow me on Instagram, if you follow me on Facebook, you probably saw all, all of my pictures and what I shared 
But when I got back from Sedona, um, I was home for a week and I got COVID. <laughs> and let me tell you this. If those of you who are listening who have had COVID, you are probably already know this. For me, COVID was like having mono again. I had mono when I was 19 years old. It manifested in my body as pure exhaustion. And during that two to three weeks of recovery, I completely surrendered to rest. So even when I was in Sedona and I, you know, I, here I am, I'm thinking that I'm resting. And I was, I was resting. Like I slept in, I, I didn't do as much as I planned on doing when I arrived because energetically I was tired. But there was still this part of me that felt while I was in Sedona that I needed to be doing all the things, right? I needed, I'm on vacation, I'm visiting here, I've never been here, I need to be doing things. And I think that's normal and natural, but I really had to work on my deconditioning of what I thought rest was. And when I got COVID, okay, so if you look at this whole experience of the sabbatical and and the surrendering to rest, if you think of it as like maybe a U shape or a V shape, right? So September was at the top of the U on the left side, right? And that was when I started to notice, oh, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. And then at the bottom of the U, at the bottom of the V shape was my quote unquote rock bottom, okay? That was COVID for me. When I had COVID, I could not do anything except lay on my couch. I I, I basically rotated between being in my bed and being on the couch and being on my couch and being in the bed and vice versa. I completely surrendered to rest during that time. And during that time of having COVID, it was, for me personally, it was absolutely beautiful. I mean, was I feeling beautiful all the time? Not necessarily, but I realize this is exactly what I've been craving. I've been craving hours in bed. I've been craving hours on the couch. I've been craving just laying in bed and watching movies and eating soup. I had a lot of soup during that time and resting. And I realized, oh my gosh. So this is one of the first things I realized. Even though I was fully in resting mode, even when I was in Sedona and even in the beginning in November, when I really started to just take it down a few notches, I still wasn't resting. Mentally, I was still not resting. And it is almost like, and I I wanna just backtrack a little bit because I forgot to mention this very important part. When I was originally supposed to go to Sedona, my original date was December 3rd. And On December 2nd, I came down with a nasty, nasty virus. It wasn't COVID, but it was what I think now is probably the flu. And I ended up having to cancel and reschedule my Sedona trip for the week after. Luckily, everything worked out. I was able to reschedule my flights, no problem. Reschedule my Airbnb, push it back a week. The Airbnb hostess was really, really great about that. I was actually sicker when I had that virus than I was when I had COVID. And I'm not here to talk about all my sicknesses, but I'm I'm here to tell you that there's a reason that all of this happened, right? When I was basically laid out for five days with this virus, I realized how incredibly, like none of this was happening by accident, right? It literally felt like I was birthing a new version of myself when I had this virus. I mean, literally everything. And that's kind of, when I when I look at sicknesses now, when I look at like, you know, getting a virus, getting sick, I don't look at it anymore as, oh, I got this thing and it's just something that happened to me. I look at it as something that's happening for me. What are the lessons that I'm learning? I don't look at sickness anymore as this like clinical like ailment that I just have to deal with, but I look at it as a rebirthing of a new version of myself. So for this particular virus, I literally felt, and I remember telling my my friends and telling my community that I, I felt that a new person was emerging. 
because <laughs> I'm, I'll spare you the details, but I literally purged my insides out during that time. I was so ill <laughs> and I felt that I came out of that like this completely renewed person. So I had that, right? I had that flu. And then a month later, not even a month later, I had COVID, right? And then compounded with the fact that I was still living in the marital home. I was in a in the process of transitioning. And I mean, everything in my life was, I, I was basically burning down my entire life. So there is no question, to, you know, not feeling well, getting these viruses, feeling the need to rest. There was, there were no accidents. So then once I recovered from COVID and got my energy back, and by the way, I used herbal medicine to recover from COVID all the way. And let me just tell you, I went from having no sense of smell and no sense of taste to when I started taking the herbs, I started taking them actually a little bit late because I just, I can't describe it. But when I got COVID, I didn't fully realize it was so mild at first that I didn't really take any action until like, I don't know, a week into having it. So, but then when I really started taking my antiviral herbs and I took my immune boosters and my homeopathic remedies, like it kicked all of that loss of sense of taste, loss of sense of smell. Like I was fully back in business, back to myself within three to four weeks of my, of my day one. So a little side note there for those of you that get COVID, definitely, definitely get yourself on herbs, find yourself a good herbalist and take care of yourself. Use your own agency, use your own intuition, find healers that can help you that are skilled and knowledgeable. So that you can get better because you can heal, okay? Despite what everybody else is saying out in mainstream society, you can heal your life, okay? Okay, I have to take a vulnerable pause in this episode because I don't know if you're noticing, but I am struggling a little bit with getting this podcast done. I feel like I'm all over the place and I'm not sure exactly why because I love podcasting, but I feel like I'm stopping and I feel like I'm just stumbling my words and then I'm stopping to take a break and then I'm going back. But I want to be in integrity and finish this episode with you. And something tells me that this is happening. It's, it's not because it's out of alignment, but it might be happening because, I don't know, I'm having some kind of, of block. So I wanted to share with you because sometimes just sharing and p- letting people know what's going on with you just helps move through the block. And I talk about that a lot on the podcast. So I just want to be completely honest and open with you, my listeners, that this is going on. So I'm a big believer that getting it done is perfection. 70% is perfection. Shooting for 100% is failure because it's really, it's hard to be 100% perfect. In fact, I think it's nearly impossible to be 100% perfect. So here I am showing up, getting this out to you. And really, what I'm about to share with you is the whole meat of this episode. It was my, the whole reason why I wanted to share with you this particular topic. And that is what happened. What happened as a result of me completely surrendering to rest. And I'm really excited to share this with you. That is why I'm not giving up. That is why I'm going through, I'm marching forth, and I'm getting this episode done. Because I want you to know what is possible when you completely surrender to rest. The details, the mechanics, all the things, like there's part of me, I guess, that feels like I need to share with you more of the details and more of the mechanics. And really, that doesn't necessarily matter because rest is going to look differently for everybody. I'm just sharing with you what happened with me. So fast forward, at the time of this recording, it is June 20th, 2022. I have moved. I have restarted with my business. And I want to share a little bit about, you know, specifically how I've stepped more into alignment as a result of all this resting. So One thing that has happened is that it is super, super easy for me to come up with ideas 
of inspiration and things that I want to work on, whether it be projects, whether it be personal projects, whether it be stuff for the business, whether it be hanging out with friends. So in human design, I'm a manifesting generator. One of the ways that we as manifesting generators tick is we don't seek out opportunities. We wait for invitations. So socially, one of the things that keeps happening over and over again is I've done very, very little when it comes to planning social events. I just get invited. And so far in the month of June, I've seen Paul McCartney. I've been to Boston a couple of times. I've been invited to parties more social events than I've been invited to in a very long time. And the reason I believe this happened is because I completely surrendered to rest. I aligned with myself. I understood what feels good. And I just started getting invited to more things, to more things that were truly joyful and exciting and fun. Another thing that has happened is that I just find myself coming up with ideas for my business, for creative projects, so much easier. They just come to me. And at that point, I ask, you know, is it a yes or a no to move forward with this? And then I decide from there if I'm going to do it. More financial abundance has flowed into my bank account than I've ever witnessed before. And that is what happens, my friends, when you step into alignment. That is what happens when you detach from any outcome or any expectations about money. You know, I talk about this a lot in my podcast. I talk about a lot. I talk about it quite often in my marketing and in my social media. I have this sense of inner peace like I have never witnessed before in my life. Now, that's not to say that I don't have my lessons that come up. I I call them lessons now. I don't call them challenges. I don't call them struggles. I call them lessons. But I am able to move through these lessons with ease and flow. And I actually invite these lessons to come in and show me what it is that I need in order to grow and evolve. So sometimes these lessons show me that like this morning I was in my journaling and I was being shown that I was still looking for ways to find love externally. I was still feeling that I was not good enough for love. And I was really starting to see how it played out in my life, how I was seeking love from various, I mean, just, just in general, not just romantic love, not just love for my family, but just love in general and how I was behaving and how it was affecting how I was giving away my personal power every time I did that, right? So all of these lessons, all of these, you know, challenges, I don't like that word at all anymore, are showing you what exactly you need to work on in order to grow and evolve right? In order to feel happy, in order to feel inner peace, in order to have things that you want in a, out of life, whether it's more time with your family, more time with your kids, whether it's growing your business, whether it's bringing in more ideal clients, whether it's having your dream home, right? So all of this stuff, all of these things happened as a result of me just taking it down like a thousand notches and resting, And what did that look like specifically? Well, so we left off when I had COVID, okay? So after I got over COVID, I basically spent like a month still in my marital home, just trying to figure out what my next steps were. And it took me a while. It took me a long while. Like that was probably the, the longest month ever. And then when I decided that it was time to move, like I had a place all lined up, it was time to go. I moved in early May. And what I realized is I wasn't totally, my energy system was not totally ready for packing up the boxes, getting a moving company and moving. So what I did was I decided to move out and I was going to do it my own way. I took a few bags over. I bought a bed. So my bed was delivered to my house and I bought a love sack and that was it. I moved into my place and I lived in my new place for two months with my dog and my bed and my love sack as my only furniture. And I went to Ikea and I bought two small tables. So I had like two small tables, but I didn't move my furniture over until 
two months after. Now, why, you might be wondering, did I do that? It was because I was surrendering to rest still. I was still in rest mode. I was still trying to discover what it was that I needed in order to feel fully replenished, in order to feel more in my inner peace. I was still exhausted in early March. Now, you might be thinking, you know, listening to this and thinking, you know, Angela, that's great. You know, you have that luxury. Like, I have a job and I have kids and I have a, you know, this and that and all these responsibilities. Now, here's the thing about responsibilities. While it is true, like I also have responsibilities. I I needed to pay my mortgage and I needed to pay, pay my bills. And there were certain things, even though I was technically on sabbatical, that I needed to take care of of in the business. So whatever your responsibilities, your day to day looks like, absolutely you need to do that. But what can you do in your life? Who can you be to give yourself that rest, to surrender to rest? Like, how does that look like for you? Like, for me, it's going to look totally different than how it's going to look for you. Because we're different people. We have different circumstances. We live different lives. So my version of a sabbatical is going to even look different than your version of a sabbatical. And so what is it? Like, And really, it starts with asking yourself the important questions. First of all, having an awareness to how you're feeling. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling burned out. I feel like I need a break. I feel like I need rest. And then taking action that will align with your reset button, basically. So it might just look like, hey, you need to start asking for help more often. You know, all those people that are always asking to help out with the kids. I know that this is a thing, right? Like I know that there's people out there that ask to watch your kids and ask if they if you need any help. I know that happens, okay? And most of the time by default, because we're used to not wanting to ask for help or we think we're inconveniencing other people, we turn that help down. Go back to those people and say, you know, remember when you asked if I needed any help? Well, I could really use some help today running errands. I could really use some help today if you could watch the kids for three hours. I could really use some help if you could just help me with dinner or something like that. There's always people that want to help you, okay? And if you're thinking, no, that's not possible, my invitation to you is to set the intention that whatever you need is always available to you. So... I hope that my stuttering and my stumbling through this episode helps you because I'm putting this out there. I know that it's going to help at least one person or else I wouldn't do it. I know that there's people out there that are chronically fatigued, that have adrenal fatigue, that have um, put on weight and it's unexplained. Maybe you have chronic migraines. Maybe you're in a constant state of anxiety and stress and you feel overwhelmed, and you feel like there is no way to turn, here is my invitation to you. How can you rest more? How can you surrender to rest? And if you're thinking that this is not possible for you, honestly, I'm just going to be completely truthful and transparent with you. What is causing you to listen to this podcast? It's already 37 minutes in. You've listened this far. There's a reason why you're here. What is that reason? It might not be that you need traditional rest like you need to take a nap, but what are some ways that you can slow down your nervous system? Maybe it's just taking five minutes, two minutes, just starting with baby steps and getting some breaths in every day. Maybe it's just laying down for two minutes a day, five minutes a day. You have that time, okay? If you say that you don't have the time, that is a choice. So you're here, you're listening. I know the reason why you're here and you're listening is because you align with this message or else you would have stopped listening a long time ago, okay? So if you're sitting here thinking this is not possible, I invite you to consider what is causing you to believe that you cannot write your own story, rewrite your own story, and create your own life. Design your own life according to your own energy system so that you can have the inner peace, so that you can end the burnout, the anxiety, the depression, the overwhelm, the fatigue, and all the physical symptoms that you've been dealing with for years and years and years. And where are you going to be if you don't take action? And when I say take action, I mean gentle action, okay? Not something that's going to tax your nervous system even more. And 
if you align with this message, if you resonate with this message, I invite you to get on a call with me. This is what I do. This is how I help people. I use my Chinese medicine background. I get my patients back into balance with their physical health while we work on the brain habits, while we work on aligning to your higher self and your divine feminine energy so that you can use your intuition so that you have your own inner agency so you can build your own inner and outer empire. Because the messaging has been so backwards for so long from society that we need external, we need the external in order to be better, to do better, to be healthier. And because you are a dedicated listener of the Reclaim Your Fire podcast, you know that that is simply not true. That everything that you need, everything that you ever wanted and desired is all within you. All of the healing, all of the inner peace, all of the financial abundance, the balance of your energy, the fire in your life that you desire is within you. So goddesses, thank you so much for listening to the very end. Thank you for holding space and allowing me to share what I shared today, despite my stumblings and my, and my mumblings. And please, reach out to me and schedule a call if you want to chat about this further. I am here for you. I am in your corner and I'm here to serve and help you. And until next time, be radiant, be powerfully authentic, and know that you can reclaim your fire at any time. Love you so much. Gratitude. Hi, this is Angela Noel, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you have found value in listening to this podcast, I would be so grateful if you could kindly share this podcast with those you care about. Please help me spread the word of empowerment and possibility and expansion by sharing this podcast. Or you could also leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Remember to follow me on Instagram at I am Angela Noel, or you could go to my website at www.angelanoelinternational.com to learn more about my work and to find out how you can work with me. Thank you very much.